In this video, we will continue practicing finding um, trig functions at special reference angles. We have already done problems 1 through 9 on previous videos. Um, so especially the first video. If you did not watch the video of problem number 1, 2, and 3, you need to go back and watch that before you watch this video. So in this video, we're going to go ahead and do the last six examples. Alright, before we get started, let me remind you, there are three um, values that you need to simply memorize. And here they are. You need to memorize the sine of pi over 4. Okay, the sine of pi over 4 is 1 over radical 2. Or some people like to say radical 2 over 2, but I'm going to use this form. Alright, that's one of the three. All right, you also need to memorize the sine of pi over 6. Okay, this is like 30 degrees. Um, the sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. Simply memorize it. And third, memorize the cosine of pi over 6. And the cosine of pi over 6 is radical 3 over 2. If you memorize these three facts, uh, if you know a couple of patterns, you can get everything else you need um, without having to actually memorize. Um, but in addition to these three facts, um, I want you to go ahead and write down three more facts that we'll refer back to as we do these problems. Um, and one of them is the cosine of pi over 4, which will be the same thing as the sine. So we'll just write that down. And the other thing is um, the sine and cosine of pi over 3. All right, sine of pi over 3 and the cosine of pi over 3. And um, we know that these will just be reversed. So the sine of pi over 3 will just be radical 3 over 2. And the cosine of pi over 3 will be 1 half. So write these six facts down, starting, starting with the three you memorized, and then extrapolating the blue ones. And um, we'll refer back to these as we do these examples. So secant is a reciprocal trig function. Um, secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So let's start off by finding the cosine of negative 2 pi over 3. And then whatever that is, we'll just take the reciprocal of it. Now the cosine of negative 2 pi over 3 is going to be the same thing as the cosine of the um, reference angle pi over 3, give or take a negative sign. Maybe we need to put a negative right here. The way we figure out if we need a negative sign or not is to look at the quadrant. Um, since we're dealing in pi over threes, let's take our pi, which is the top half here is pi, and split that up into three parts. So that would be sort of like this. Okay, so each one of these is a jump of pi over three. So now I need to go to negative two pi over three. So that means I'm going clockwise. So starting from here, this will be negative 1 pi over 3. Negative 2 pi over 3 would be right here. Now, um, we have to remember that uh, the sine and cosine are the coordinates. Um, so specifically, every point on the unit circle has the form cosine comma sine. Um, now, so basically the x value and the y value. In the third quadrant, I guess I should probably show my x and y axis, all right? So here's my y axis, and there's my x axis. So this is the third quadrant. Um, both the x and the y are negative. So cosine and sine are both negative. So since cosine is negative, we'll have to put a negative sign on that thing. Okay, now back to business. So we'll have negative something. Um, but the cosine of pi over 3 
is one of the ones that we just wrote down. That's one half. So that's one half. So, but that's not the final answer because we're supposed to be doing secant. Um, so if I want the secant, it's going to be the reciprocal of this. So it's going to be negative 2 over 1, which is just negative 2. So that will be the final answer. Number 11, 9 pi over 2. Um, sine of 9 pi over 2. Well, this is going to equal the same thing as the sine of the reference angle pi over 2. Give or take a negative sign. Maybe we need to put a negative on it. The way we can tell if we need a negative on it is we will sketch the unit circle and take a look. Um, pi over 2. Here's pi, the top half of the unit circle. So pi over 2 would be that divided in 2. So each one of these jumps is now pi over 2. But we need to go to negative. No, I'm sorry, I lied. <laughs> Excuse me. We need to go to 9 pi over 2. Um, so counting from here, this would be 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, 6 pi over 2, 7 pi over 2, 8 pi over 2, 9 pi over 2. So 9 pi over 2 would be right here. Now, to know what the sign of this is, you just have to remember that every point is in the form uh, cosine comma sine. Um, and in this case, we can just look at it and know what the coordinates are. Um, so the coordinates here are 0 comma 1 because it's, it's on the y-axis. All right, This is a unit circle, so it's up 1. Um, so what we need is the sine. So the sine is 1. Um, so there it is. Um, that's going to be the final answer. Uh, as I'm thinking about it, we didn't actually use we didn't actually use the reference angle at all in that problem. We just directly did nine pi over two. We saw where it was, and we wrote down the answer. So the thing I said about the reference angle that we we have to do that for other problems, but not when it's uh, pi over two. You just do it directly. Um, and let's keep that in mind as I do number 12 because I don't think we'll need a, a reference angle. Um, oh, you know what? As a matter of fact, there is no reference angle for pi over 2. So I shouldn't have said anything. I should have mentioned the word reference angle on problem number 11. Pi doesn't have a reference angle either. So let's just do it directly. Um, so let's just do the unit circle. Half of the unit circle is pi. So we're going to do 3 pi. So starting from here, this is 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi would be right here. Now we know that all points on the unit circle are in the form cosine comma sine. Um, but we know the coordinates of this point because we're talking about, you know, the y-axis and the x-axis. And this is a unit circle, so every radius is 1. So this is the point negative 1, comma, 0. All right, so that's the cosine and the sine. All right, so um, we know that tangent is sine over cosine. So tangent of 3 pi is going to equal the sine of 3 pi over the cosine of 3 pi. All right, so that's going to equal 0, which is the sine, over negative 1, which is the cosine. So that is going to be 0, because 0 divided by anything is 0. Okay, number 13, cosecant pi over 6. Another reciprocal trig function. So um, 
cosecant is the reciprocal of the sine function. So let's start by finding the sine of pi over 6, and then we'll just do the reciprocal of it. Um, but sine pi over 6 is one of the three um, that we memorize. So um, that's one half, all right? I, I keep saying, oh, we have to, we memorize these. Please make sure you actually memorize these three pink values. All right, so, um, so for that reason, we know that this is uh, one half immediately. Um, so that means the cosecant is just going to be the reciprocal of this. So that's going to be two. So that's going to be the answer. Number 14, cosine of pi over 2. Well, a quick glance at a unit circle will handle this. So here's pi. Uh, pi over 2 will be halfway. So pi over 2 is right here at the top. And uh, we know that any point on the unit circle has coordinates cosine, comma, sine. So the coordinates of this point are um, 0, comma, 1, all right, because it's over nothing and up 1. So it's the uh, cosine 0 part um, that we want. So the cosine of this point is 0. So that's it. That's, that's the answer. The answer is simply 0. Okay, and finally, all right, this will be the last problem, cotangent of negative pi over 3. Cotangent is a recipro reciprocal trig function. Um, it's the reciprocal of tangent. So we will do, uh, let's do the tangent of negative pi over 3 first. And then whatever we get, we'll just do the reciprocal of that. So the tangent of negative pi over 3 is going to be the same thing as the tangent of the reference angle, uh, pi over 3, give or take a negative sign. It might need a negative sign. So we'll figure that out by looking at the unit circle. All right? This is pi is halfway. All right, so pi over 3 is what you would get if you split this up in three ways. All right, so if I split this up into three equal parts as best I can, then each of these are going to be pi over 3. Now, we are to go negative pi over 3. So that's negative 1 pi over 3. So because it's negative, we go clockwise, and this is it. <coughs> now, every point is of the form cosine comma sine on the unit circle. So cosine is the x, sine is the y. In this quadrant, okay, and here's the y-axis and here's the x-axis. In this quadrant, <clears throat> um, cosine, the x value is positive because it's to the right. But sine, the y value is negative because it's down. So we have a positive cosine and a negative sine. So, we know that tangent, okay, so tangent of pi over 3 is equal to sine over cosine, all right? So the tangent is going to be um, sine pi over 3 over cosine of pi over 3, okay? Um, but we wrote these facts down at the beginning. But before I do anything else, let's go back to talking about the signs. Remember, the cosine in this quadrant is positive, so that's fine to leave this as a positive. But the sine is negative. All right, so we have a negative divided by a positive. Don't forget that. Okay, so sine of pi over 3 and cosine of pi over 3. Let's look back at what we wrote down. Uh, sine of pi over 3 is radical 3 over 2, and the cosine is 1 half. So we'll have radical 3 over 2 over 1 half. So see the negative, though? So it'll be negative 
radical 3 over 2 over 1 half. OK. Um, since the denominators are the same, they're going to cancel out. So really, it's going to wind up just being the numerators. So it's going to wind up just being negative radical 3 over 1, uh, which of course is just um, negative radical 3. Um, all right, so that means, OK, I ran out of space down here. But that means that, um, maybe I'll put it down here, tangent of pi over 3 is negative radical 3. I'll put it in both places. OK, now remember, we, we really wanted the cotangent. Um, so that's going to be the reciprocal of this. So put a 1 over it. So that's why the final answer is going to be negative 1 over radical 3. OK, which is the same thing as radical 3 over 3 if you had a calculator. Um, but that's it. So now we've seen 15 examples of this. So I hope that's plenty to help you nail down this concept. Remember, you must memorize these three pink values. And then know that for pi over 3, you just switch them. Um, and uh, for cosine is the same as the sine. All right, I hope this was helpful, guys. I will see you on the next video.